In this video, I would like to share how I develop um, and install electrical accessories on my vehicles. In this video, we'll be talking about the installation of a light bar on my 2014 Jeep Cherokee. I start the process by developing a specification and um, guidance and instructions for the installation. And it's fairly detailed. We talk about desired functionality. What do we want our electrical accessory to do? In this case, our forward-facing light bar will be an independently switched light. It doesn't switch with anything else. It will have its own switch. Um, we talk about where it's going to be located. This is something you have to consider for each accessory. In this case, we'll be using a license plate bracket on the front bumper. Then we'll talk about how the switch works. Is it going to work with uh, multiple states? In this case, we're just going to have a simple on-off state. Then we have a parts list, everything that we need to make the job work. So in case, this case, we have a light bar, we have our switch, we have wire that's sized according to the current and length that'll be passing through it. We have our relays, some fuses, and then associated hardware that we'll need. I then create a schematic that allows us to wire everything up correctly. This was created using the DigiKeys um, free schematic software creator. We have 12 volts from the battery that goes into a fuse holder mounted on the driver's side quarter panel on the inside of the hood. There's a 15 amp fuse that then splits current, one going to the switch, which activates a relay, and the other, once the relay is activated, engaging with the light bar. I then will describe how the light bar um, will pull power through each pin of the relay, how that's going to activate, and then we have some wire accounting, battery of the fuse block, fuse block to the relay pins, and from there you can figure out how much wire you'll need to buy. Lastly, we have power accounting, so in this case we have a 162 watt light bar, um, divided by the nominal voltage of the vehicle is 12 volts, it results in a 13 and a half amp circuit, and so we'll use that 15 amp fuse I referred to earlier. So let's go take a look at the Jeep, and we can see how that was all implemented. So here's the light bar on the Jeep. It's a 25 inch light bar. In the Jeep, we put a switch and it's just hanging out right here. We might find a different place for it. The wires go through back there. There's a grommet and that punches through. You'll need to get underneath the car to pull those wires through and up. All right. The hood release is right here. One, two, three. We can't actually open it. All right, so starting with the fuse block, we have a spare terminal on this bus bar that we added a connection to and ran a 14 gauge wire to the fuse holder right here. This is the input on the fuse holder. There's live 12 volts here. We've got a 15 amp fuse in here, and this is where I showed that split. One of these lines is the output to the light bar and one of these is the switch, so it provides 12 volt to the switch. When the switch is on, that provides 12 volts to the white wire of this relay. Both this fuse holder and this relay are held on by two-way tape. These connections are soldered. We've got heat shrink. Um, so we've got the switch when this goes on. For the ground wire, it comes around here to this pin on the battery, which was open. And I found a nut in my shop that just happened to fit that same nut that fits over here. Right here we've got our ground, we covered that. We've got the input to our relay here, and then the output to the light bar, which goes through here. And we actually found a gap. Um, we found a gap in between this piece of plastic and underneath, and was able to push the wire through that. All together, doing all these connections, doing the heat shrink, the soldering. Uh, this process took about around two hours, and not including planning. I hope you find that helpful. In the future, you could add more relays here coming off the fuse block 
It may also be worthwhile to get a second fuse block to serve as kind of a ground block rather than doing everything here at the battery. You have one thing going to a central deal and you go from there. But for now, we're very happy with how this works. Have a great day.